If you constantly remind yourself after every defeat, after every setback, every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes, eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. See, a lot of people, because they don't want to make any mistakes, it takes us to the next level. A lot of people don't want to fail. Fear of failure, fear of success, and guess what else? Fear of the unknown. I saw a guy last week, came up to visit me, haven't seen him for years, Bob Boyd from Columbus, Ohio. Bob Boyd introduced me to motivational tapes, introduced me to a lot of motivational speakers and positive thinking and a multi-level marketing company at that time called Best Line Products, had an inspirational leader named Bill Bailey. Jim Rowan was in that as well. And so Bob Boyd, that, that folded. And, but here's what about Bob Boyd, why I was interested in seeing Bob last week that drove up from Columbus. Bob Boyd, that I know has been involved, personally I know, and I've been involved in business deals with him. Bob has had at least 30 failures that I know, 30 business failures since I've known him since 1972. Incredible. So I wanted to hear this deal that Bob was bringing me. Les, I've got to talk to you. <laughs> so he came in in the traditional Bob Boyd fashion. Hello, Les, how you doing? I said, fine, Bob. I wanted to know if Bob had lost in his fire steam, had life beaten his dream out of it. Bob said, Les Brown, I've got a deal. You know, you get exposure to a lot of people. Man, I've got a deal. I'm thinking, does he want me to join Amway? What is this? <laughs> Man, I've got something going. Man, this thing, man, Les, it's a money machine. I said, tell me about it, Bob. But here's what was going on in my mind. Bob didn't mention anything about all the losses, deals we'd lost some money on. He, it never came up in conversation. It was like this is the first deal he ever brought me. I said, what courage? You know what Winston Churchill said? <laughs> you know what Winston Churchill said about courage, Pat? He said, courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. <laughs> so you want to courageously hold on to your dream and not lose enthusiasm. See, Bob has not internalized failure. Things just didn't work out the way he wanted them to work out. He's still looking for his pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And he was so fired up, traditional Bob Boyd fan. He took his coat off. Les, let me tell you something, man. You've got to see this deal. With the things you're doing, you're now on PBS. Les, you'll make a fortune. Man, I just can't wait to tell you about it. I said, tell me, Bob, tell me. <laughs> when he got to talking, I said, Bob, I want to be a part of it. He said, now explain to me what I just told you. I said, I don't know what it is, but I want to do it. I want to do it. <laughs> I didn't even know. See, you get fired up about some People will come to see you burn. They want to go to. <laughs> so I like the fact that Bob has not lost his fire. Bob is still hungry. Bob still sees his dream. Bob is still searching for a way to make it happen. He doesn't care about people talking about it. Man, he's never kept a job. Guys had 15 or 20 different jobs. All these business deals. Bob has turned a deaf ear to that. A guy in Los Angeles, all over the front page of the newspaper, he just passed the bar after taking it 48 times. He had more than enough reason and excuses not to take it. His son has a law firm. He could have been a legal assistant, a clerk. And people all of a sudden used to laugh at this guy. He was a laughing stock. Are you taking the ball lately? <laughs> Can you imagine what they did to this dude? You know what I got here is? Man making a career taking the bar. <laughs> but by the way, he need to make a career to pass it. <laughs> people will do that too. You know, people talk about John Kennedy Jr. failing the bar. Did you read in the newspaper that he passed? I didn't see that, but did they make a bigger deal about him passing as they did when he failed? No, you know why? People like to see you fail. They like to see that. It, people like that. I don't know why it's set up like that. I was on the expressway, traffic was jammed up. You know what was happening? It was an accident, but people pull over to the side to get out of their car to go look, <laughs> to see somebody else's suffering. That's why talk shows are so popular. So people like to hear other people's misery, get it caught up in that. Then they go magnified in their own lives because that's all they focus on. I bet not catch you going to any accidents here. Yeah? <laughs>
<laughs> Bob Boy, with the conquerors volcano like that gentleman who decided it doesn't matter how many times I fail. I'm going to courageously pursue it. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they think. This is something that I want that gives my life meaning and value. You got a volcano like that in you somewhere. There's something. So I started talking to other people and I would ask them what they were doing. And I said, but is that your passion? And they would say, no. I said, then what's your real passion? And they would tell me what their real passion was. Then I said, well, then why aren't you doing what you really want to do? Oh, I can do it, but. And they would continue on. So this word, you know, but just kept on coming up. And then it also has some friends like woulda and coulda and shoulda. <laughs> and one day I'm going to have my own business. Those people who talk about one day I'm going to. Some of y'all know some of those one day I'm going to people. Are. Raise your hand. Some of you get up in the morning and look in the mirror at that person. <laughs> I just tease it. I just tease it. All right. So how is it that many times we block ourselves and we use these words almost like we're in a trance, like we're sleepwalking through life, that we find ways to cancel out our dreams that I think that but is a dream killer that a lot of things that we want to do a lot of places we would like to go a lot of things we would like to experience and we just stop at but and we build a case in fact I was reading something the other day that that talked about but it says but is an argument for our limitations and when we argue for our limitations we get to keep them see but will cause you to procrastinate but will cause you to hide out behind fear but will cause you to come up with all type of excuses that you can validate your inaction and not acting on your dream and right now more than ever people need to look for ways to live their dream people need, need to look for ways to make it on their own there is no such thing as job security there's no such thing as a storm proof or tragic proof life there are no guarantees today, ladies and gentlemen. The illusion is gone. There was a time when, when we graduated from high school, you're told, go to college and get out, and you go and work for a corporation for 30 or 40 years, they'll give you a go watch and you'll retire. <laughs> Special announcement, that day is gone. <laughs> that day is gone, never to return again. So instead of people living in fear, feeling stressed out, feeling powerless, feeling like victims, I think it should be a time that we need to begin to look at ways that we can become an active force in our own lives. Look at ways when we can decide to take charge of our own destiny. Look at ways when we can decide to design a life of substance and begin to truly live our dreams. And it's time for people to decide, I'm ready to get on with my life. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left. A guy named Bob May say this, say, don't let nobody turn you around. Do that right quick. <laughs> Now, you know, a lot of people say, I'm going to live my life one day when things get right. When I get all my bills paid. When I get my feet on the ground. I say, what have you been walking on? <laughs> See, there are no problem-free moments. A guy named Dimples had a record one time called, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And I say, if it ain't one thing, it's 12 others always something there to build a case on why you can't move on why you can't grow to the next level why you can't begin to manifest your greatness why you can't begin to live life on your terms always something there to block you to keep you where you are and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness always some fear how do we handle it and I'm saying that if you've been hiding out behind but if you've been using the fact that you don't have enough money or you don't have the education, take it head on. Go get the education. I was saying to a guy the other day who was saying, he, he, I said, how old are you? He says, 47 years old. I said, your sister tell me that you can't read. He said, that's right. I said, why? Well, you know, I, I, I didn't go to school. I said, Excuse me, how old are you? I'm 47. 47? Yes. And you can't read or write? Yes. Have you ever heard of adult school, adult education? Have, have you decided that you should learn how to read to begin to expand your world? Why are you using that as a racket? 
Why don't you decide now that you're going to expand your world, that if other people can learn, you could learn too? Well, it's hard for me. How do you, have you been and sit in a class yet? Have you signed up yet? No, I haven't. See, a lot of people say no, ladies and gentlemen, to things, and they don't even know what they're saying no to. They haven't even challenged themselves. He hasn't even gone to sit into a class and say, teach me how to read. Instead, it's been easier for him to go through life, he thinks, trying to play a whole con game, pretending he knows how to do something that he doesn't know how to do. And you know what? Most of us go through life like that. Most of us go through life pretending. Pretending that we're satisfied where we are, pretending that everything is okay, pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires, when really deep down inside we do really want more. But if you look at our behavior, if you judge based upon what we do, that really will tell you some true stories about people, because you have to judge a tree by the fruit it bears, not the fruit that it talks about. See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life, but all you have to do is watch their actions. That will tell you something. So I used to pretend that I wanted to lose weight, but how could you tell I was pretending? Watch me when I have a piece of sweet potato pie. <laughs> Let me get within walking distance of some peanuts, <laughs> some potato chips. See, I was pretending that I really wanted to lose weight. No, all you do is watch what I eat. I'll tell you what I'm seriously committed to. People tell you, oh, yeah, one day I want to have a restaurant. See, they're pretending they want to go into business for themselves. They're not serious. How can you tell less? Watch their actions. Watch what they're doing. The proof is in the pudding. So if you want to do something, if you thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to start looking at it, start doing research on it, start tackling it, start becoming involved in whatever and wherever it might lead you to begin to explore the possibilities in that particular thing that you're seeking so that you can begin to learn all you can about it. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there. Whatever training that's required, that you're going to go get that training that you're going to get started right now. And George Washington Carver would say, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. S.B. Fuller used to say, and you heard Joe Dudley talk about, always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But most people, you know what they do? Most people go through life quietly and safely, tiptoeing to an early grade. Find out what it is you want, and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. People that have found their passion, people that found the things that they love, people that have found the things that they can pour their lives into, those people live longer. I was in New York and I had to do a seminar at a special church and a guy by the name of Reverend Johnny Youngblood. And I said, how is it that you were able to build this big housing facility and got all of the various community and religious groups together to, to have this dwelling for 2,000 residents that were, were once homeless? How were you able to take on this responsibility? Wasn't it overwhelming? He said, the kind of work I do, he said, it's in me. I've got to live what's in me. And I think that's everybody's desire in life. You've got to live what's in you. Life is just too short and unpredictable. But what, are, what do we say? But, but there will always be tomorrow. Oh, no. There are no guarantees you're going to show up tomorrow. There are a lot of people who were here yesterday that they're not here today. There are a lot of opportunities that were around yesterday. They're not here today. Oh, you can wait, but you know what Abraham Lincoln said? Well, good things might come to those who, to, who wait, but only the things that have been left over by those who hustle. <laughs> so who want to go through life picking up leftovers? You deserve much more than that. The leftovers that somebody has left you. So take it head on, begin to explore it. Here's something else. Decide to do it now. Decide whatever you want to do, that you are now going to become actively involved right now, exploring the possibilities for you.
that you're going to look at it and do just a little bit of it right now. When I decided to become a speaker, I didn't just quit my job and just ran out and say, I'm a motivational speaker. No. What I did was I decided to start looking at other people that were involved in the speaking profession. I volunteered to work with some speakers so that I could learn. Whatever you want to do, get your feet wet. Gain some experience doing some volunteer work in the area and find out whether or not this thing you want to do will fit for you. A friend of mine told me he wanted to have a restaurant. I said, have you ever operated a restaurant before? He said, no. I said, well, really, you don't even know if you want one. I said, what's your expertise? What do you bring to the table? He said, I can cook real good. I said, well, what about the management side? What about the business part of the restaurant? You're not going to be cooking all the time. Somebody's got to receive the money. Who's going to manage the personnel? He said, you got it right. You got a point there. So this guy got a job in a restaurant in the evening time on a part-time basis. After doing that for a while, he said, you know what? I think I just want to be a chef. <laughs> he said, after working there, people didn't show up to work. He, he said, it's hard to find the help. People weren't responsible, the headaches, the guests were just giving him problems day in and day out. They weren't ever satisfied. He said, no, I just think I'll stick to cooking. <laughs> See, you got to find out what fits for you. Because you might decide that after you go up in there and examine it and experience it and, and get some experience under your belt on it, well, you say, this is really not what I want. This does not fit for me. So decide that you're going to do that. Now, John H. Johnson said something that's very important. He said, there's no defense against an excellence that meets a pressing public need. See, whatever you decide to do, look at it and find out what is it that I have that I could bring to the table that can begin to enable me to ensure that I could be successful in this. Where is the opening for you? There's room for you out here. Out here in the arena called life, there's room for you to come out and live your dream. Don't allow but to keep you in the corner, or keep you up in the bleachers, looking at life, being a spectator, not being a participant, making a difference in life. I believe that all of us came here with something. All of us showed up to give something, and that nobody, but nobody's going to give that service that you have to give. No one's going to produce your product. No one's going to write your book. No one's going to open your academy. No one's going to begin to create your daycare with a special curriculum to help to cultivate the high self-esteem in our children. That's your idea. And if you don't bring your idea out here, when you die, all of us will suffer because we've been deprived of your genius because you allowed but to keep you in the bleaches and not pursuing your greatness. You take it to your grave with you. And that's what most people do. I think that's why the guy said that many people die at age 21 and don't get buried until they're 65.